quick start guide for using something different connect to add to your dropship orders manually. So to start you just need to register or log in. We've already got an account so we're just going to click log in. If you're registering just click register account here. Once you've registered or logged in you'll land here in the search products page. And the first thing that you need to do is to update your information. So we just go into settings, account settings, and then here you need to update the information about you and your business. Just so that we can contact you about an order should we need to, and also so that we can display the correct information about your business on your invoices. So once you've filled in this information, you just need to click save. And after you've done this, you'll need to update your payment settings. Here in the payment settings section, you'll need to add a default payment method. Even if you're using something different connect manually to add orders, it's still worth adding a default payment method so that you don't have to enter car details every time you place an order. So just click add. Select your card type and then input the information for your card. You'll notice that the button at the bottom says pay securely, but at this moment, no payment is actually taken. Once you click this button, the card details are processed by trust payments and your card information will appear here like this one. To make it the default payment option, you just need to hover over the card number and then a pop-up will appear to select it as your default and just click yes and save and then save again. Once you've updated your information you just need to find products that you'd like to sell. So if you go to search products, you from here you can use the search bar to look for items, use the categories or just scroll through. When you see a product that you'd like to sell, you can hover over it and click source product or you can visit the product page to find out a little bit more about the item and from here you can click source product. From the de product detail page you can also click add to cart and then that will start an order. But first we'll go back to finding some other products to sell. So we'll source a few more items as examples. And anything that you choose to source will be added to your My Products list. And this is an overview of all the products you've decided to source. It'll include an image, the SKU, the product title, the category it sits on, on something different connect, the price to you uh, when you purchase the item from us, the stock quantity, whether it's been mapped. If you're using something different connect manually, this would always be set to no. It will show you the date that you decided to source the item and if you do decide to connect any sales channels they'll appear here so you can see which item you've decided to sell on which channel. So anything that you decide to source will appear in my products and then it will also appear in any export reports that you use. So exports will be quite useful to you if you're using connect manually as you can export the product information to build your product listings on your sales channel. So if you go to settings, exports, and then from this drop down, you can select the export you'd like to run. Product basic details is quite useful. Here you can pick and choose the fields that you'd like to include in your export, or you can click select all, and then click the green download button, and then click here. And this will download a CSV, of the product information. So once you've built your project listings and they're live on your sales channel and then you start to receive orders for those items, you'll need to come in to connect and place an order for them. So if you go to search products, you can either place an order directly from the search products page by adding to cart or you can go into your cart and you can add an item from here as well. 
So at the moment I had already had an item in my car which you can see so you can delete that quite easily or you can increase or decrease the quantity of an item. Once you've got everything in your cart that's on the order you need to proceed to checkout and here you can choose to self address the order so it arrives to your delivery address or send it direct to your customer. So we're going to Example. and then you'll need to select the shipping service we only offer one shipping service so that will be automatically selected and from here just click check out here it will ask if you'd like to use your default payment method if you click this little button and click pay it will use that to pay for the order or you can select to use another card However, if you just close this, you'll see that the order has been created, but it just hasn't been paid yet. So it's marked as order unpaid and not yet dispatched. So if you'd like to pay for the order from here, you can click the three dots. You can view the order. You can edit the order, pay for it, or raise a ticket against it. This screen you can find from the orders dashboard available on the left hand menu and this will eventually list all the orders that you've created. And from here you can also see a returns dashboard which will list any returns that you've created. You can, once this has grown and you have a number of orders you can use different filters and you can also export your orders into Excel if you'd like to do any reporting on them. So this is everything that you need to get started on something different connect as a manual user. If you need any further help at any time you can visit the help center which is available here in the left hand menu and from here you can view a number of different articles and videos to guide you through step by step different actions and tools on your account.